assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel so for today's topic it's going to be a bit serious as you can see by the title below we're going to talk about covid 19 and sme so without further ado let's jump into the video so today i'm going to answer a few questions about this topic and the first question is what is covid 19 well i'm pretty sure that everybody knows what is COVID-19 it is a very deadly seriously dangerously virus it's not just a simple COVID COVID full COVID COVID virus it is a deadly virus so what is coronavirus coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that get their name from the halo of spikes proteins on their outer surface which resembles a crown The new coronavirus is called SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. As a new virus, it means that previously no one in the world has been infected with it and therefore no one has antibodies to it. Because no one has antibodies, everyone is at risk for catching the virus, becoming ill and spreading the virus. With the discovery of SARS-CoV-2, there are now seven types of coronaviruses known to affect humans. Four regularly circulating humans and mostly cause mild to moderate upper respiratory tract symptoms that most people think of as the common cold. SARS-CoV-2 causes a disease called COVID-19, a severe respiratory illness. COVID-19 can be deadly particularly for older people and those with underlying health conditions. The virus is spread through droplets in the air after coughing or sneezing, which people nearby can take it through their nose, mouth, or eyes. The virus can also spread by touching a contaminated surface, but it's unclear how long the virus lives on the surface. Once inside your body, the virus travels quickly to the back of your nasal passage and to the mucous membrane in the back of your throat. The virus attached to a receptor called angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or S2 on respirator cells in your body. The virus genetic materials enters your cells. The virus then hijack your cells to produce copies of itself, which go on to infect more cells. The time between the initial infection and the first symptoms appearing varies widely, but it's 5 days on average. Symptoms often start in the back of the throat with a dry cough and sore throat along with a fever. Symptoms become more severe as the infection starts making its way to your lower respiratory tract. This respiratory distress can lead to organ failure and death. While COVID-19 can be deadly, the vast majority around 80% of cases are mild to moderate and people recover within a week or two. So we move to the next question, which is the impact of COVID-19 pandemic to the SME in tourism industry. So as you know, the number of tourist arrivals and foreign receipts was expected to reach all-time high last year as a part of strategy to put in place a decade ago under the Economic Transformation Program to make Malaysia a leading tourist destination. It was also designated a Visit Malaysia Year 2020 which would give the number of further leave. As you can see by the picture, it shows the business sectors affected by COVID-19 both positive and negative impact. As you can see, the tourism and leisure is the negatively, the most negatively badly impacted by this COVID-19. Aside all the strategies planned by the government, at last the COVID-19 pandemic brought the entire tourism industry to the grinding halt as the government, along with its counterpart around the world, took measures to contain the spread by closing borders causing a massive drop in revenue loss. Many hotels shuttered, while some travel agencies and business folded as their funds dried up. In the first nine months of the year, tourist arrival to Malaysia contracted by a whooping 78.6% to 4.29 million from 20.1 million in the previous corresponding period. So most of the tourists, or 4.23 million, arrived before the borders were shut on March 18, 2020. And as a result, tourism receipts, which is the country's third largest revenue contributor, 
plunged from 80.9% to 12.6 billion from 66.1 billion in the previous corresponding period. So, accommodation, which is the second highest contribution from foreign tourists after shopping, also suffered. The hotel industry alone is expected to lose as much as 6.45 billion in revenue this year. Overall average occupancy rate AOR this year estimated to be 27.51%, while the average daily rate ADR is projected to be 196.69. As you can see by the pictures, it shows that Kuala Lumpur has the most room cancellation number which is 55,000 followed by Sabah and Pulau Pinang while Sarawak has the lowest number of room cancellation. So since March 2020, 109 hotels, resorts, motels, homestays and chalets have shut for good and as at May 2020, job losses were at 12,000 which approximately 6% of the industry's workforce. The amusement and theme park industry has not been spared. According to the Malaysian Association of Amusement, Theme Park and Family Attraction, MATFA, the estimated losses in revenue between March and December add up to 2.8 billion. So job losses are expected to be the total 2,543 with 420 workers being let go in December alone. The industry and related economic activities have suffered losses of over 100 billion in total. So the sector is turning to the domestic market to help it recover. The national tourism policy was launched on December 23rd last year to help the industry and make Malaysia a preferred tourism destination. Have you guys ever heard about a hotel manager which selling the food cooked by the hotel chef by the roadside near their hotel. It shows how much people are struggling to survive during this period. Unfortunately, we can say that it is a difficult time for business. Some of the hotel closed during this period include Holiday Inn, Resort Penang, Jazz Hotel Penang, Penaga Hotel Penang and many more. So the third question is to suggest the possible ways to recover the tourism industry in Malaysia. So what do you guys think? What should we do or what should the government do to survive after this COVID-19? So historically, tourism has shown considerable resilience in the aftermath of a disaster and crisis regionally and internationally. So it was possible often due to the integrated intervention from regional, local and national government assisting the business through a series of stimulus package and incentives such as tax breaks and wage subsidiaries. As the impact of COVID-19 is expected to be unpredictable in both time and space, things are not going to get back to normal at worst before the pandemic. Rather, we need to readjust ourselves to the new normal. Therefore, tourism destination, business and subsectors would have to adopt themselves to the new customized measure. The Malaysian government should reconsider to prepare a recovery plan anticipating ahead of the next one to two years of contingency plan focusing on mostly two aspects which is capacity buildings and digitalization of the tourism industry. Next is predominantly social media engagement. So as you guys know, social media platform inevitably implied to be a vital tool to combat and revive the tourism industry from the aftermath of the current pandemic. The predominantly social media engagement can play an important role in spreading positivity to reboot the pandemic-induced discrimination and negative perception for the affected destination and tourism business. Prioritizing social media and other digital platforms such as blogs as a source of inspiration could expedite the resurgence process of the tourism industry in the post-pandemic era in an effective manner. For instance, if you guys have heard, a community-based tourism operator, CBT Malaysia known as Miso Walai Homestay, is preparing themselves for a much-anticipated recovery period for the upcoming year by making a video concerning their current course of actions, which are showing building maintenance and refurbishing activities, returning the staff on hygiene and safety aspect, as well as improving their website. Next, introducing a clean and safe destination. In the post-pandemic period, the biggest challenge will be the tourism and hospitality industry to restore the trust of international and domestic tourists. 
Therefore, introducing a clean and safe destination could be one of the ways to regain visitors' trust with the aim to award certification to the tourism operator, for example, hotels that comply with the SOP by the relevant authorities. Restaurants and hotels also need to rapidly acknowledge themselves into global, national and local certification programs or campaign on COVID-19 compliance related to safety, health and hygiene procedures. The ministry also has strategies for tourism recovery, for example, the government incentive. So the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Datuk Nancy Shukri, said the government incentive played important roles in boosting the domestic tourism sectors. So the government has provided incentive and assistance through economic stimulus package such as Prihatin, Prihatin SME and the National Economic Recovery Plan Penjana that can be utilised by tourism and culture industry players. This assistance is not only to ensure the continuation or survivability of existing activities, but can also be used to improve products and service in the industry. SME also need to reassess of their business models whether it is still suitable for the new normal post MCO. They must reassess expectations of the market and be more sensitive to the changes in habits. SMEs, especially in tourism industry, need to explore the new markets, new customer segments, introduce new products, which are suitable and relevant for the new marketplace and determine what consumers are willing to spend on. They need to predict what may emerge from the new normal. Next is the new adoption of new technologies and digitalization and implementing e-commerce solution. Changes need to be made in terms of budgeting and spending. SME must consider the adoption of new technologies, digitalization and implementing e-commerce solution to reduce costs and save time and resource. SME need to realize the benefit of technological adoption for their business. SME also need to learn how to leverage on social media platforms such as um, Instagram or Facebook for the purpose of marketing and branding, ultimately to reach out to a higher volume of customers. SME also should implement cashless means of transaction such as cloud-based point of sales, post system and account reconciliation package ARP with the risk of coronavirus contamination present on the physical banknotes and coins, cashless payments such as mobile e-wallets and contactless debit and credit cards are expected to experience a higher uptake. Okay, we've come to the last question. What is the motivation factors which is the push and pull factors for both tourists and tourism entrepreneurs to the vacation or journey after the disease is fully recovered? So what is the motivation factor? In my opinion, the tourist push factor is the factor that push tourists to travel locally after MCO. Did you guys know the government provide incentive for individuals? which is the personal income tax relief up to 1000 ringgit for expenditure related to domestic tourism like for domestic hotel accommodation, domestic flight, domestic train rides and attraction until the 31st December 2021. So tourism tax also will be exempted from 1st July of 2020 to 30 June 2021. Next is the revenge travel. So the term revenge travel may likely to be a trend throughout the season of 2021 and beyond. The term essentially means after being cooked up for essentially a year, tourists become very urged to go for travel. Since all of this has come with increased costs and hassle for travelers, domestic travel will pick up more quickly than international travel. Next is to support the tourism in Malaysia as the government encourage people to travel. So the Malaysian Association of Tour and Travel Agent Mata has encouraged Malaysians to travel domestically to revive the local tourism industry following the announcement of the Recovery Movement Control or the RMCO that will see interstate travel restrictions removed. Next, people want to be outside, to be healthier and to reconnect to nature. Being housebound for pretty much the whole 2020 has left many travellers thirsty for wide open space. Therefore, many will likely hit the call of the wild and make plans to visit the great outdoor this year. It makes for a good social distancing effort too. So next is the pull factor. What is the pull factor for tourists? The pull factor is the factor that encourages tourists to choose local destination post-MCO. Why? Because it has many 
less crowded places or destination. Tourists will be planning more local holidays to off the beaten path destination in the country. For the time being, tourists will try to stay away from commercial tourist spot simulation that are populated with travelers. Instead, they will check out places that are more popular with locals. Next is more destination and attraction practice proper SOP. So since people will be more concerned about their health than ever, they will be interested in service and products to help them stay safe and healthy, even if some of them come at an extra fee. Next, it has lots of outdoor tours, walking tours and open-air activities and experience. It is expected there will be increasing demand in rural destinations over the urban ones. Travelers will prefer less crowded cities and places until social distancing phase out. Outdoor tours, walking tours, open air activities and experience will generate higher interest from the travelers. So next one is the push factors of the entrepreneur. In my opinion, the push factors of entrepreneurs is the factors that push the tourism entrepreneur to explore tourism opportunities in Malaysia. Why? Because there is less demand to travel abroad. Travel operators need to be prepared to change what they have been doing in the past. For example, an agency that has been focusing on selling airline tickets only now needs to sell domestic or inbound travel package too. Domestic travels and staycation would increase after the pandemic as people living in the cities wanted to travel to nearby location. This is where hotels and other establishments can ensure travelers' health, safety and flexibility. So after the pandemic, tourists will opt for closer destinations as they might hesitate to plan long-distance trips and some countries might still retain the travel restriction. Next, also this incentive from the government for the business owner includes tax deduction on expenditure incurred on employees, training costs, extension of deferment of payment, tax installments for business in the tourism industry, for example like travel agencies, hotels and airlines from 1st October 2020 to 31st December 2020. Next is the exemption of hospitality industry from service tax on the provision of accommodation and related service until 30 June 2021. And the last one is the tourism tax will be exempted from 1st July 2020 to 30 June this year. So what the full factor for entrepreneur? The full factors for entrepreneur is the factors that pull tourism entrepreneurs to explore new destinations due to the changes in habit and trends of customers because there will be increased demand in local travel so the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture Dato Nancy Shukri said to encourage domestic tourism the Ministry launched Siri Jelajah Smart Kamlanjung and Domestic in 8 states and Malaysians were responding well to the call so Malaysia as you know has a wealth of attractions that local can discover or rediscover it also a prime time to holiday in your own country as tourism operators have introduced attractive deals to attract more people next because people change of habit from traveling abroad to travel locally so findings also shows that about 84% stated that COVID-19 has changed their traveling habits with 71.3% saying they would prefer to travel within Malaysia than overseas and mainly with families and relatives. After that, the changes of interest from traveling in the cities to travel in the nature. While food, shopping, culture and arts are popular with local tourists, Green tourism is a trend that's come out of COVID. So Reza Cockrell, the co-founder of the Habitat Penang Hill, thinks the green tourism will appeal to Malaysians as nature-based tourism offers a lot of that, whether it's a beach resort or trekking to national park and of course the big trend like glamping. He noted a spike of interest in the habitat, especially among travelers from Kuala Lumpur on the staycation road. With easing of restriction from lockdown in this country, many people wanted to be outside to be healthier and to reconnect to nature. And he thinks that nature-based tourism has a lot to offer. And also they expect to see an increasing demand in rural destinations over the urban ones. Travelers now will prefer the less crowded cities and places. 
anti-social distancing phase out. Outdoor tours like walking tours, open air activities and experience will generate higher interest from travelers. So, what do you guys think? Do you guys think this video is informative? If yes, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Before I'm ending my video, don't forget to support Tourism Malaysia. Go to Aquaria, go to KLCC, go to Zoo to support our Tourism Malaysia. And I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Assalamualaikum.